morning. I'm Caleb Sullivan. And I'm Emily Sullivan. And, and welcome, welcome to First Lutheran Church. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Christ is risen. And that is what gives us hope as Easter people. I want to thank you for joining us here at First Lutheran Church for our celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Carl Breeler. We're, we're just so thankful to have you here with us. The resurrection gives us hope in the midst of death, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of pain, in the midst of all the problems of this world. We are people of hope because of Easter, because of today, because of 2,000 years ago. Thank you for joining us. I have a few announcements before we begin our worship with the thanksgiving for baptism in which God claims us, marks us with the sign of the cross on which Jesus died, and seals us with the Holy Spirit. We have the new Christ in Our Home daily devotional book that's pop, pocket size or the large print. If you would like one, call the church office and we will mail one to you. We also have new copies of the Living Lutheran, the monthly periodical of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of which we are a part. If you'd like one of those, let us know. We have those also. 
Couple of announcements coming up a week from today, Sunday, April 11th. We will still have online worship. That'll be posted early next Sunday morning. For those of you who are members of the First Lutheran Congregation, we will be having a special congregation to approve an expenditure of an improvement on the driveway coming into our parking lot. Those of you who are members should have received a letter about that. That meeting will be at 9.30 by Zoom next Sunday morning, April 11th. And I have good news for you. We are going to reopen for in-person worship two weeks from today on Sunday, April 18th. It will be by reservation only. We will ask that you reserve a place either with our sign-on genius, here's the link, or call the church office. It will be physical distancing. Masks will be required. I think we'll do some singing behind the masks. And we will celebrate Holy Communion then as well. I would remind you that we celebrate Holy Communion this morning as we celebrate the resurrection Prepare the elements so that you have them ready so that you can celebrate the, the, the very presence of Jesus in bread and wine as he comes to us. I think that's all the announcements I have. We begin our worship now with the thanksgiving for baptism. And I again begin with that proclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life that we share in Jesus Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on our church wherever we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, God, you, you gave, gave your only Son, son to suffer death, death on the cross, cross for our redemption. And, and by his glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of death. Make, Make us die every day to sin, sin, that, that we, we may live, live with him, him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Claire Hudson has a children's message, so get the children from your home up in front of the screen to hear this Easter message from Claire. Have you heard the good news? He is risen. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Can you believe it's already been 40 days since the beginning of our preparation with the Lord? I recall we had an object that helped us through the Lenten season. What helped us count those 40 days? Do you remember? At the beginning of Lent, those who wanted to made a Lent chain with me. And although those 40 days are up, I made my chain go just a little bit longer so I could celebrate this last piece with you. Today, let's see what my final piece says. My final piece says, celebrate, he is risen, hallelujah. I'm so happy you could open that one with me. Such exciting news that is. Now, whatever you may have planned today, know that Jesus is with you throughout it all. Celebrate him and all he has done for us and will continue to do. And as these next days and our Easter celebrations pass by, don't forget about him or all the love he has for you because it is enormous. Keep being the kind and loving person you are because Jesus would want you to. Happy Easter, everyone. Thank you, Claire, for those words on this Easter Sunday morning. And now we thank Sammy Pollock for reading the first reading from the book of Acts. The first reading is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is accept acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message sp spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose, rose from the dead. He commended us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one who ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sammy. And now, Sam Raimi will be reading for us the second reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The second reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures 
and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some had died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I read the gospel text for today, I'd like to uh, give you a moment to see and hear from our presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. She has prepared a clip for the whole church, and we will view that. I try to imagine what it must have been like on that first Easter morning when there wasn't the, the knowledge of the resurrection, when instead it was all about death and disappointment. And I imagine Mary Magdalene coming to the tomb in order to care for Jesus' body, to prepare it for burial. The story was over. The hope was gone. And then Someone shows up in the garden, and Mary can't recognize him. Thinking that he's the gardener, she says, Sir, tell me where you've taken the body so that I may, may bring it back here. Imagine that, a woman literally thinking that she could carry the dead weight of a man. All of that grief, the heaviness of that, physically as well as spiritually. And just then, Jesus speaks her name. Mary, he says, and her eyes are open. And she can see Jesus because she has been seen by Jesus. Her name has been called by the risen Lord and now she is part of the resurrection story. That happens for all of us. In baptism, Jesus has called all of us by name and knows every one of us. And we too now are part of the resurrection story. Her mourning was turned into dancing. I'm going to leave you with this hymn from our newest worship resource, All Creation Sings, about the transformation of Mary's grief into joy. Happy Easter, dear church.
Thank you, Bishop Eaton. And now the gospel for this Easter Sunday, the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord, comes to us from the gospel of St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on, on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. We're going to go now to the tomb, and I'll share my message with you from this tomb at the Mount Cemetery. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, we're standing outside an empty tomb here. We're at the Mound Cemetery. Leroy may help me to try to get in here. We were not able to get in, but I can assure you that the tomb is empty. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is risen. He lives today. That is the good news of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And because of that, we need have no fear whatsoever of sin or death. You know, St. Mark's telling of the gospel of Jesus Christ is it's by far the shortest and is actually one of my favorite gospel writers of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I think I like Mark maybe the best because Mark is so short to the point. He moves right on. He wants to tell the story and be on with other matters. He tells us today that a young man it's in the empty tomb when these three women come. And here are the words that this young man declares. He says, do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. You know, this scene really comes alive in Mark's gospel. And at the same time, the narrative in many ways is very sparse, very few details, very much to the point. As I said, Mark wants to tell the story and then move on. There is no flowery language in Mark's gospel. He brings us immediately to the heart of the story. He is risen. He is not here. Imagine how we might have celebrated Easter had we not been in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. Imagine, if you will, if this were a more normal Easter. We would be down the road here a quarter mile. We'd be inside the sanctuary at First Lutheran Church. We would have the lilies there. We would have bright lights. We would have the white claws out on the cross. We would have wonderful music. We would celebrate together the sacrament at the altar. We would sing out our joy and our celebration at the resurrection. It would be far different than what we experience right here. And far different than the story the way Mark tells it. If we were doing that, imagine if we were trying to portray it in a dramatic way. We'd probably have Jesus come out from the tomb, maybe wearing a white gown like I have, bright lights and so forth. But that's not the way Mark tells the story. Mark thought 
differently than that. As Mark remembers the story, and as he tells it, there are three women that come to the tomb early on that first Easter morning. Three women, two Marys, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene, and another woman, Salome, a woman that we only meet outside the tomb, and we never hear from her again in any of the Gospels. Three women in a graveyard, an empty tomb, distraught, seemingly uncertain about what they will do next, about what to do after all they had come to anoint the body of Jesus, and to prepare it for a proper burial, which had not been done on Good Friday. And approaching the scene, they see that the stone has rolled back, been, already been rolled back. They wonder how they would do it, but it's been accomplished. They look up and they see the stone rolled back. No bright lights, no Easter lilies, but they step up to the tomb and they look inside. And lo and behold, there on their right side is a young man. We don't know if it's an angel or not. Mark doesn't even try to convince us of that. But it's a young man, and he speaks to them. And he says those powerful words, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. If you really want to see him, this young man declares, Galilee is the place that you will find him. Galilee, the hills around the Sea of Galilee, the places where Jesus walked and taught and preached and healed. Tell that to the disciples. Tell that to Peter. Powerful words of that young man in the tomb speaks to these three women. You are looking for Jesus, but he is not here. How different that is from the scenes that we oftentimes imagine. How different this is from a normal Easter Sunday morning, pre-COVID, when we would be in the sanctuary, celebrating with the organ music, celebrating the sacraments, celebrating the very presence of Jesus. Mark ends the gospel very differently than Matthew, Luke, or John. Some people suspect that the actual ending of the book of Mark has been lost along the way. Maybe the, the pages became dis, dis, detached somehow from the manuscript. Who knows what happened to them? I am inclined to think that Mark wanted to end the story this way, that he imagined this from the very beginning, that the story of Jesus is not a story that ends but it's a story that goes on. It goes with you and me. As we leave the worship space, and our worship space this morning is radically different. Some of you may be in the sanctuary, not in the sanctuary, but in the parking lot to worship with us later today. Or maybe you were there earlier today. But this Easter is completely different. And I'm reminded of this young man who speaks to these three women, Mary, Mary, and Solomon, and says to them, go out to Galilee. There you will see him. We are commanded to go out and share the good news. And I think we have a clear message from this young man in the tomb that we find Jesus out in our world, out in our neighborhood, in our workplace, in our school, with our friends on the ball field, in Rodemachers or Corner Drug or wherever we go, even when we're wearing a mask, we discover Jesus out in the world. For he is there. He is not here. He is not in the tomb. That's what this young man declares in Mark's gospel. Jesus goes ahead of us. And as we go, we will see him. We will see him. And he calls us forth in faithfulness.
He calls us to sing with, with words of praise and joy on our lips, with acts of service and kindness to others in the world. This is how every day of our life is to be lived. And it's the way many a worship service is called to end as well. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Bear the good news of Jesus Christ. My friends in Christ, we are a sent people. Sent out into the world. Jesus Christ has brought us from death to life. He gives us purpose. He gives us meaning. He gives us hope. Even in the face of death. I want to invite you to respond to the words that Renee is going to put on the screen here. I begin with the words, May God who has brought us from death to life fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. He has been raised. He is not here. He is going ahead of you. You will see him there. Go and tell the world. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
As Easter people, let us now join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of grace and love, we thank you for our First Lutheran Church faith community. We pray for all those who call this their church home. Today, we pray especially for these First Lutheran Church members. Nancy Harder, Elaine Harkins, Sandy and Kevin Hartman, Bruce and Susan Haugland, Derek and Darcy Hoffman, and their children, Braylon and Evan. Be with them, keep them si safe, and guide them with your spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of grace and love, we praise you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill our, your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We praise you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of your creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve over the loss of loved ones. Today we pray especially for the family of Mark Osborne in this time of tragic loss. Give them your comfort and peace. We pray for those who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery, or undergoing treatment, especially Fred Wensloff, Bonnie Keach, Brenda Liebhard Johnson, Bob Johnson, husband of Lois, Dwayne Peterson, father of Jody Bruns, Pastor Dave Aker, and those that we name silently in our hearts. Grant them your healing and strength. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We praise you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We praise you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all those who have gone before us in proclaiming, your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you this morning for your offerings and contributions that support our ministry here at First Lutheran Church. Whether you submit them electronically, send them to the mail, or drop them in the box, and we thank you for your prayers. You are in my prayers this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from death to life, and the promise that that brings all of us is certainly reason for celebration and joy. Let us pray. God, God of love, you call, you call us beloved, beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup. And when he had said a prayer of thanks, he poured it. He gave it to them, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the cup, the blood of Christ given for you. And now may the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace this Easter morning and every day. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I want to thank you again for joining us this morning for our Easter Sunday celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning, April 11th. We will be having an online worship service. Also, for those who are members of First Lutheran Church, we will be having a special congregational meeting. That will be at 9.30 a.m. by Zoom. And the password for the Zoom meeting will be sent to all of you. And we hope that all of you who are confirmed members will join us for that special congregational meeting. Have a wonderful week.